All right, so um, we still have some bits and pieces we have to deal with in CSS. And again, some of this is once you've got the basic, uh, the basic idea of how to select something and apply a property to it, a lot of it you'll only get by messing around. And there's nothing wrong with messing around, um, either using Firebug or, or, or working with the, the text itself, as long as you've got the syntax right, that is the structure of the file, you can pretty much apply these properties and see what they do in various browsers. Um, but I do want to touch briefly on on lists. I'm going to leave actually tables and forms. Um, you can kind of tackle those on your own. Uh, they're they're not minor things, but but they're kind of specific, and there's only so much we can do in a short set of uh, video lectures. And in fact, for unordered li for lists, I'm only going to look at unordered lists, and I am going to um, make use of one of our our uh, one of the virtues that we are trying to uh, adhere to here, which is laziness. And laziness is, for programming and coding, a virtue. Uh, you are supposed to not reinvent the wheel. Nobody's impressed if your code is brand new and you've done something in a brand new way. That's not true. You might impress a small number of other coders, but probably they'll say, why didn't you just reuse the code that already exists? And in that spirit, I'm going to be following along um, a... Uh, uh, an art article by Mark Newhouse that showed up in in a list of parts several years ago, and has become kind of the this actually many years ago now, almost a decade ago, and has become sort of one of the de default standards uh, for uh, talking about CSS and lists. So it's old, but it's uh, it's good, and you can either follow along. I won't go through the whole tutorial because I won't have time. But you can follow along, or you can um, kind of run through that tutorial on your own, and, and uh, either way works out. So we're going to be working with. Uh, Zen Garden again. So just to remind you to look in the, uh, we can take a quick look at the um, at the HTML for this. It's it's a standard unordered list with UL to start with and UL to end with, and list items LIs um, in between. And each of these actually has a you know a, a quick uh, link to something and then uh, a link to the author. And it's also worth noting that all of this is within this L select div. So let's start with kind of talking about issues of indentation. Uh, let's go ahead and take this UL. We'll, we'll, we'll do it within um, L select so that we're only doing one list for now. So just to remind you how that works, if we go in here, we can go down to the bottom and we'll say that we have an ID, so we need to use the, the hash mark, and then we do L select. And we'll, the thing that we're going to be affecting in there is the UL. So what this says, notice there's no comma here, is that look in the division L select and then look for the unordered list and that's the thing we're talking about in these particular rules. So let's do this real quick. Margin left is zero and padding left is also zero. So now what we've done is we moved it over from the default so that it's at zero. Now something to note is that it actually pushes the um, pushes the bullet points out past the edge here. So let's do a quick, this is for the div now not for the UL so I'm just going to do um, I'll select, and I'm going to say border, you know, one pixel, solid, red. So this is the edge of that div, and you can see that the unordered list is actually pushing those bullet points out past the edge. And so this is one of the ways in which um, unordered lists are a little bit difficult to deal with. Um, so if we wanted to to move them in, we, we could actually just bring in, this is a, a length of 1M. We could go in here, and if, if the padding left, or rather, rather um, you know, if we had increased the padding there of 1M, you'll see that it pushes it into the right place. Uh, by default, it's actually a little bit more than that, right, because it indents it, but at least that gets us with the bullet points inside the space. So keep that in mind, that when you're doing margin and, and when you're doing um, padding, it's really applying to the text of your uh, unordered list, not the thing itself. Now, we can, uh, we can add in our own um, bullet points, and, and I'll let you kind of the markers. We can choose from the markers that exist, or we can pull in our own URL, um, and we can do that using the list style. I'm going to do it in here rather than going back and forth. I'll add, click, right click, new property, and we're going to do list style type. And remember that I can use the up and down arrow to go through the types here. So disk is the one that we're most familiar with. There's circle, which is the empty circle, square, decimal, this is a little weird to have decimals um, for an unordered list, but you can. Decimal leading zero, lower Roman. There's also a list style position. And so far, we remember, we've moved this in by 1M. 
but we can it can be outside as in this case it can be inside which pushes it in so if we have inside and we have zero then we're okay it actually goes to zero you see that there's absolutely no spacing here between the the item and the thing but it's it's uh but it's inside the actual box the, the box for uh unordered list inside outside okay. and you can actually do uh we're not going to do it here but uh, list style image, and you can load in your own image. If you don't like disks or, or circles or squares, you can put your own thing in there, and that's fine. Now, um, one of the things that we use lists, we use lists not just in this standard listing format, which is top to bottom. In this particular case, we are doing a top to bottom list, but um, what if we wanted in here to have uh, a menu bar at the top? So let's go ahead and insert that. Right now, we don't have that in the Zen. Crossing over to the index of the HTML itself, because we're talking about content. And we'll do it right here at the very top before, well, we should put it inside the container. But before the intro, we'll go ahead and put in uh, div id equals navbar. Okay, Earth, Moon, Mars, this is the default way we'd expect this to get laid out, so it's not surprising, right up here at the top. But really what we want it to, is to do is be across the top um, horizontally. In fact, uh, there's, there's a good argument, I think, that all navigation bars should be horizontal across the top and we should avoid all vertical uh, navigation. Uh, I think there's some, some good evidence that that's the case. So how do we make this list, and it makes sense that it's a list, how do we make this list into a horizontal list? Well, one of the things we need to do is first make it into a truly inline uh, definition. We're done with this now, so we can close it. For now, let's start with just um, uh, including a little bit of padding on the, on the nav bar. And just so we can see it up there, we'll go ahead and do a border. In this case, we'll make it a black border. So that's a very small change, and we'll take a look and see what that looks like. So we've just put a little box around what we're working with so we can find it more easily. So this is a standard set of definitions. We already know what margin and padding and font we do, uh, but uh, the new one here is going to be inline. And inline is uh, something that allows you to change the way things display so that instead of being blocked elements, they're span elements, if that makes sense. In other words, Rather than assuming that things are take up the whole space all the way across, it says, okay, when I'm done with this, it doesn't include a new line at the end. Just load things after it off to the right. So by default, when you load things into the screen, it, and, you, and it's an inline, you've changed the UL to an inline, um, everything in here is going to kind of stack up um, vertically, or horizontally instead of vertically. So if you've been watching carefully, you may have noticed a small but an important error. We don't actually want the... ULs to be in line, we, that is the unordered lists to be in line, unless we have multiple unordered lists, which we do in other places, but not here. What we want is the LIs to be in line, so we need to change this to UL space LI, which means all the list items within this list. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what this does. So this is the basics of, of, laying, out, of laying out an unordered list. Um, the tutorial goes on to talk about how to make this into a nav bar with tabbed tabs. Uh, I really encourage you to take a look at it. There's a good chance that you'll at some point be designing uh, a, a nav bar, and this is a good basic way of creating a navigation bar across the top. Um, there's a there's a very uh, popular setup uh, for doing this called uh, uh, sliding windows, and if you, I'll probably link to some things, but you can find it as well tutorials on how to make a sliding windows version. There are versions that pop up um, uh, various inside things, and so you, know, you have to slide a little bit into JavaScript usually to do that, uh, but you know, ways of making fairly complicated menus. All of them based on the kind of basic setup you see here, which is a, a list, uh, an unordered list usually, sometimes definition lists. Um, so uh, uh, this is the basics of kind of doing that, but but I encourage you to make use of those, and we'll talk about this later, especially making use of cookbook examples. That is, taking a, a, a template where they've shown you, where they have a, a bit of text that you can copy and paste, and then making it useful to yourself, to your own site. All right, um, next time we'll talk a little bit about, um, you know, if, if one uh, sheet is enough or if we need to have some alternative sheets as well. Uh, I'll see you there.